start and I think uh, the other people will join us uh, later so I am ending this poll so how is everybody focus overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Hungry. yeah I I feel a little hungry too so today we are hosting Ridwan Salam he's a um, he is an e-learning, very experienced e-learning uh, expert, especially for creating gamified e-learning experiences. So uh, I am just send, send, uh, sending Mike over to you, Ridwan. Do you want to start? Sure, 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 of course. Uh, actually, I'd like to start to introduce myself quickly. Uh, yes, as Dana said, I am an e-learning developer, but mostly I prefer to use uh, actually, for a few years, I prefer to use learning experience design. Uh, in my opinion, it fits me more than uh, e-learning developer. But I didn't used to work as an e-learning developer or learning experience designer for a long time. I used to be an EFL teacher. I used to teach English to adults. Uh, I used to work in different language courses. And while doing that, I found uh, a tool which is called Storyline, Archibald Storyline. And, uh, you know, if you are an EFL teacher, you use some books and in those books, there are, you know, some CD-ROMs. And okay, so <laughs> I am a little yeah. old, okay. <laughs> I'm a little old, we used to have the CD-ROMs. And there were some games in them, like, you know, the, the, the simple games, like the matching card games or some uh, fill in the blanks game. And I, I asked this question, so who made these games and how, <laughs> how do these people make these games? And I started to uh, look for uh, ways to build my own games with, uh, with my own questions. And somehow uh, I end up with uh, Arctic Storyline by the help of one of my students. Uh, he was working in I, the IT department in a company. And I started to build my quiz games. And you can't imagine how many quiz games I created with different uh, with different teams, like with the zombies, with uh, pirates, uh, with birds, uh, anything I like or anything I see uh, in a different game. I try. I was trying to adapt the the, the mechanics or the at the beginning just the design of all those uh, game elements into my quiz games. And step by step, year by year, I started to learn more about instructional design, e-learning and gamification. And actually after many years, I realized that I was trying to build uh, game fight experiments, experiences. But at the time I didn't know that it has a name, I was just, calling them quiz games and uh, I really love that field and and now I can say that I have had some really successful uh, game fight experience and really unsuccessful uh, <laughs> game fight experiments and today uh, we are going to talk about the the, the path we we should follow actually while creating a game fight uh, e-learning experiments experiences sorry so yeah that before... sounds an incredible story actually <laughs> yeah it was the short version <laughs> yeah i'm sure so 
do you I think uh, you can start sharing your screen if you want. Yeah, sure, sure. So I thought since we are talking about the gamification and I thought it would be nice to start playing with a game, right? Okay, so to play this game, I need a volunteer. And if Harish uh, joined me in this game, I would be thrilled. Okay, uh, am I audible? Yes, 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 yes. Cool. Perfect. So actually, okay, so I didn't design this game uh, to play together, but okay, you will see. Let's 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 leave it. So you can guess which game it is. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm gonna read it. And I will call you Dudi. Did you like your name? <laughs> Sounds good to me. So yeah, I always, I always wanted to have a funny name and good. Let me give you a welcome gift, 50 game coin. Mm -hmm. So you will need it soon. Okay, I'm choosing the options for you because it is an unfinished uh, game. <laughs> so we're gonna play uh, rock, paper, and scissors. And you're gonna bet, and if you win, uh, if you lose, actually, I didn't have that win part. If you lose, uh, you can earn more by watching some videos. But again, okay, this is just a, a prototype. Okay. As you will, uh, how much do you want to bet? Um, 15. 15, okay. Yeah. And black. Uh, which one? Choose, choose, choose. Rock, rock. Rock, rock. okay. Yeah. Ah, ah, sorry. All right. Let's move on. You still Let's have some five. coins. Five, five. 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 No, just fine, five. just fine. Yeah, please. Okay, so you don't like taking risks. <laughs> All right. Paper? Too quickly. Which one? I, I said paper. Paper? Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay. One more. One more. 15 this time. Or 25. Okay. Let's go. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, paper again. Sorry, paper. Yep. Not bad. I, I didn't lose any coins, right? No. Scissors. Scissors. Sorry. Ah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, you can't hear the music, but there is a music, and uh, I will share the link of this game. So now I'm gonna stop here. Uh, as you see, it it is an unfinished game, but it is not an e-learning game it is just a game right. so here we have a link here uh Damna, can you share it oh no i can i can i can here you can do it now or you can do it later or during the presentation during our uh session uh if you find an idea you can come here and uh I want you to think about it and how can you improve this game by adding new elements and mechanics. But here, again, I'm telling you that it is not an e-learning game. It is just a game. So uh, you can also add that more case. Everyone, I'd like to use this game, this mechanic on uh, with on an e-learning project. So if I were you, I would convert it. Blah 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 blah. So just share your ideas and. Let's accept it as a activity, a thinking activity on games. So why is it important to think about the, the games? Because if you want to create an e-learning game or if you want to create um, an 
a gamified experience. It doesn't have to be an e-learning uh, project, e-learning course. Uh, maybe you'd like to uh, create a project in your workplace, uh, in, in real life, not on a computer. Uh, we have to understand the mechanics. We have to understand the psychology and of the uh, games and the players. And without experiencing enough games and playing enough games, uh, in my opinion, it is hard to uh, create something uh, which people enjoy. Of course, of course, we can create a very quick uh, e-learning games, like which I did many times. A quiz game. Think about a pirate team, and there are uh, you. You become a, a captain, and there is your opponent, uh, a bad pirate, and there are ships and when you find the correct answer you sing one of uh, his or her uh, ships or the when you couldn't find when you answer the quiz uh, wrong you lose one of your ships so it is a very simple mechanic and i did it i did these kind of games a lot but here's the thing when you don't have the story when you don't think about the users when you don't think about their uh, needs uh, these the, the the people's reaction but, mm, okay that's nice but that's all so in my opinion using game elements in just uh, quizzes uh, it's not enough to create uh, an experience and because of this we have to understand the the mechanics, the psychology, the approach uh, of a game design process. So, how do we start? At first, of course, we're going to play a lot of games. We're going to play different kind of games. And when I say it to people, they said, okay, so Rudvan, I'm sorry, but I'm very busy to finish a game. And I'm not uh, that lucky that to have uh, those hours, many hours. So you don't have to finish. OK, I know some games, they took, uh, they take a uh, very long time to finish. You don't have to finish, but you can start, you can check, you can see, and you can take some notes. And uh, you can think about those mechanics. And you can think how I can uh, implement these into my uh, e-learning projects. So before starting to work on a GameFight project, we need to do some homework and we need to play some games. Uh, they don't have to be, by the way, they don't have to be uh, digital games. Yeah, if you choose the digital games, it is easier to get some elements. But some people say that, okay, so I don't like playing games on computer or on mobile, mobile phone. So try different board games. And by the help of uh, one of my friends, uh, he's he earns his life from those the board games and he make people he makes people play games with him and he earns money i really don't understand how he uh, has a job like this but it's amazing and he shares some board games with me and there are some uh tabletopia i guess it was the correct name so there are a lot of different board games and you can play with people so let's accept that we played a lot of games we learned and we took some notes and we found some really nice mechanics, then we will start an e-learning project and it's going to be a gamified e-learning project. So, of course, it is the same, you know, it's always the same, uh, not only about e-learning, not only about uh, gamification, if you are going to produce a, a, a product, so you have to know your target audience and you have to know uh, you have to have as much information as you can. So you have to know that uh, what motivates them and how much time they have, what they like, what they don't like, and uh, what about their ages and their uh, background and their experiences about uh, e-learning, about game, gamification, and uh, the topic you want to focus on and create personas. So actually this part, the first step is almost same to create an e-learning project, right? 
uh, please share link this project. Julio, Julio, uh, I suppose it is the correct pronunciation. Uh, which project? You're talking about the, the, the Can You Beat Me game? This one? I shared the link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All is possible. All right. Yes, 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 yes. We can share uh, as much as I can. Uh, some of them uh, are not possible to share, but we can talk on it. So, uh, when we understand our target audiences, you know, the, the characteristics, their preferences, their existing knowledge, then we can uh, define our uh, targets and we it, it gives us some borders. And while creating uh, actually any kind of projects, we need some borders. Uh, otherwise, uh, we, we will follow some elements, some styles, which we like. So we have to put our feelings a little uh, behind and we need to focus on uh, our learners, our players. Then, second step, identify the core element. In here, core element, uh, actually, you can think about the, you know, the knowledge, skills, and this kind of stuff. And what is uh, going to be in the middle of, in the, in the center of your learning experience? You have to find it and you have to work on it. And after you decide uh, the, the, the core element, what it's going to be, what do you want to make them to do? And of course, I, I mean, define the target behavior, yes, knowledge and, and skill. Then we have it, then we have the core design, then we have the, sorry, not core design, the, the, the core target. We are going to build uh, our other targets or uh, other elements around it. But we have to stick to our core uh, target, uh, core element, and we, um, it's, it's going to be the, the value of our uh, final product also. We shouldn't forget that one. And then the right mechanism. So when we think about the game mechanics, people, or I'm sure you have experienced many uh, game fight projects in e-learning and the, the, most of them, uh, also I did the same thing. We follow the, the simple ones. First of all, the points. Okay, so when you finish this level or when you finish this unit course, I don't know, you will get that many points. Then what I'm going to do with those points? And uh, it was another mistake which I made uh, in my uh, previous courses and the uh, game fight experiences. I gave them points, but I didn't tell them what they are going to do with all those points. And uh, one of my friends, actually one of my mentors, uh, he said, okay, so think about the games, think about the Mario. It is very, very simple thing. In Mario, uh, he runs and he coin he collects some uh, coins, but when the the number gets one hundred, okay, so it turns into a different thing. And in your games, in your uh, experiences, you need to do uh, um, a cycle. Okay, so they are going to do the, the, this. They are going to run. They are going to collect those coins, gems. I, I don't know uh, the, the the badges, but. How are they going to use them? So you have to give them uh, a reason to use uh, these coins, points, stars, uh, or also the, the counter. Okay, so you have 100 coins. You have to give them a reason to make it zero. Then, okay, so it will start again. So this is the circle. We need, a, if it is, a, of course, a detailed and long game fight project, uh, we need something like this. If you focus on the points uh, mechanics, I said I, I mentioned points a lot because uh, most of the time it is the most common uh, mechanic which we want to use because it is easy and we see a lot of examples of it. But we have also different kind of mechanics like the team. So. Uh, 
it could be about uh, I don't know. It could be about the cybersecurity, and you can tell this uh, course, and you your your team uh, team can have uh, I don't know. And, and there was there was an example. Uh, it is the the forest. So sorry, uh, castle. There is a castle, and the castle is your company. And there are some uh, attackers, and you try to protect your castle. Uh, you are a swordsman or uh, I don't know a warrior there and it was it was really nice because uh, they didn't show me any uh, computer any viruses any uh, attackers you know uh, the, the the pirates uh, but the the presentation of the topic and the, the, the game elements uh, it was really impressive for me and I still remember that one and I mentioned uh, cybersecurity because it was one of the courses uh, I created recently and for that uh, I have searched uh, and I have looked for a lot of uh, game fight cybersecurity interactions and most of them were using you know the classical elements you know if you're talking about the cybersecurity there are some pirates there are computers viruses this kind of stuff but that one was different and while creating our team uh it is nice to try to get out of the box a little maybe not much but a little because we don't want to we don't want our learners to disconnect and the story uh in my opinion it is one of the most powerful uh elements most powerful mechanics and again in the past i wasn't good at uh creating stories for uh my courses or my quiz games and i got some uh, I, I read some books and some uh courses i say and i'd like to share the the link of a book uh, yes interaction story design and the Rand screen. Are you familiar with this book? And also, we can use the missions. So those chapters, those uh, parts in your e-learning course, uh, they can be the missions, and you can give them different names. Uh, okay, it is about the let's say let's let's say that cybersecurity course. Uh, you have that some uh, names of the parts but you can give them different names some i don't know some funny names some interesting names and it can help people to uh, see it in a different way and also we say that the challenges so those quiz you know mostly we use quiz questions at the end of the chapters or the the, the course we can change them into the, the some kind of challenges and i know that Damna has some really nice examples for this and it would be uh, really nice if she can uh, share the examples here and of course the rewards and we use we, we use rewards to give feedback so any ideas okay we have a course and we have uh we we have our team let's say that the, the pirates or the warriors and we have the story the missions and challenges and in that kind of course let's say that is again a cyber security course and rewards what could it be any ideas of course we are going to use the rewards as feedback any ideas Um, I don't know. <laughs> I will be happy if someone will share anything. Class Dojo uses new color option for characters. Yes, really good. If you have a character in your uh, course, 
we can use the same thing. Maybe you can have a new weapon and or new skills which you can use uh, for the other uh, quiz questions. Maybe omit two wrong options. It could be a skill, but you, of course we need to find a, a fancy name for it. Yes, 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 yes. Additional resources like the weapons information. Actually, maybe we can do something like this. Think about it. It's a, it has a medi medieval uh, theme and you gain enough coins or uh, I don't know, some items and there is a shop and you go there and in that shop there are some scrolls uh, like Sylvia said there are some scrolls and these are the additional uh, resources normally we add the additional resources to the resources tab and you can download them but if you give them a reason if you give them a purpose and if you make them reach those additional resources uh, by the help of those kind of mechanics in my opinion, they would be more valuable. Yes, like a skill tree, you can have some skills. Of course, we need to think about it more. What kind of skills? It, it depends on actually the, the, the course. Maybe, maybe we can find uh, different skills for different, uh, depending on the topic. And the fourth step, First step, it's the alignment. In here, we're gonna align game elements with the learning objectives. So we can have uh, different elements. And sometimes we, okay, so maybe you have done, or maybe you will do, there are some game elements and you will really like them and say, okay, so I'm gonna put it into my course and put it into my game fight experience. Just you love them. And sometimes, sometimes, okay, so in my, <laughs> according to my experience, Sometimes they don't work because you love them and you'd like to use them, uh, but they weren't suitable for your learners. So uh, we need to map chosen game elements to the learning objectives. So they, we need to match them. And the purpose, each game element serves a purpose. This is, this is really important. So we can't say that, okay, so you did it and there is a gem for you, so why? Okay, so what is the connection? And why did I gain that gem? Why did I gain that sword? And what I'm going to do with it? So we need to give a purpose. And create game elements. Okay, in this part, I would like to stop a little. And again, I would like to ask, when we say game elements, okay, I mentioned some of them, but there are uh, tens of game elements. When I say game elements, what do you, what comes into your mind? You can use chat or if you'd like to speak out, you can unmute your mic. When we say game elements, okay, so we have badges, we have uh, avatars, we have leaderboards, we have points. What else? Everyone is so quiet today. Yeah. yeah, they are a little tired. Yeah, it could be in-game items. It could be about the environment, levels. Yep. Timer. Yeah, timer. Uh, actually, the timer, for me, uh, it is a little tricky one. And because I usually use the timer for, used to use actually for the quizzes, but then I got a feedback from one of my learners and she said that, all right, so in this one, you use a timer, but in real life, okay, so I don't need to give this, make this decision quickly. So uh, I don't think that there's a need of timer. Then I said, yeah, okay. so. We are talking about the tasks and we would like to improve their skills and knowledge. And in real life, yes, if you make, if you need to make this decision quickly and if it depends on uh, time, yeah, using timer is really reasonable. But if it is not, sometimes uh, it can uh, backfire. 
sounds exactly Julio. And sometimes we think the overthinking about the game elements. We would like to use the, the characters and the uh, you know uh, badges, this kind of stuff. But sometimes just using some sounds and sound effects, some music, and they put the learners into mood and they say, oh, okay, maybe it is not a full game fight experience. Maybe you are just creating a gameful, let's say, a gameful experience and sounds put people into mood and it is, it is really effective. And sound effects, of course, points, points, counters, dramatic characters. Yeah, Sejai, what do you mean dramatic characters? I'd like to hear more about it. If you are, if it is suitable to talk. Dialogues. Mm -hmm. With emotions, I wish to inspire. Yeah, yeah. Good. Rules, goals, and objectives, rewards, levels, story, characters, feedback. Okay, then our, we can move dramatic characters in terms of appearance sometimes. Yes, 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 yes. It would be really nice. And uh, Okay, so when I finish this part, I will share some examples. Okay, so I'm sorry from the, uh, in advance that some of them are in Turkish, but I used one of them, a dramatic, kind of dramatic character, and it was nice to use it, and people really enjoyed that one. Okay, then our next step is integrate all the things we are uh, we prepared, and uh, we're gonna integrate the the game elements into the course content. For example, let's think about the, the sim sim simply, and we can award points and badges uh, for completing uh, that uh, level, or we can think. Uh, deeply about that topic. Okay, then we need to show the progress. So we can use, we can show the progress in many different ways. And one of them is the levels or stages and points and the items you gain. But again, don't forget it. When we have the items, I'm, I'm collecting the items, but what I'm going to do with all those items, maybe they can be, uh, I can collect items for each uh, section. And at the end, I use them to answer a different question, a, a bigger question or the biggest, uh, I can use them to solve the, the biggest uh, problem in my story. And I use that kind of mechanism in one of my uh, game fight experiences. The, it was created for the kids. And actually, I can show some examples from it. Oh, sorry. I guess I closed that one. Okay, I'm gonna find the link and I will share the link. And you are uh, a detective and you uh, try to solve a mystery in a, a museum. There are some simple games, simple tasks. And at the end of each uh, section, you get a, a mysterious paper, a, a paper, and it has a mysterious uh, icon on it. It doesn't mean you can understand anything when you just look at that uh, piece of paper. But at the end, when you collect four of those uh, clues, they mean something. And by the help of this, you keep the you know excitement, or the you make the learners curious for the whole course till the end and negative feedback of course losing lives losing points and uh, just sometimes we make uh, our learners okay when they can't reach a certain level or points we make them repeat 
that uh, section. But okay, I use this, I use this uh, feedback style and mechanics. But uh, while doing it, I feel a little guilty because uh, I guess Harish, it was a few years ago or two years ago. I'm not sure. Uh, Harish wrote um, an article on. Uh, he shared it on uh, LinkedIn, and uh, he was mentioning a game, uh, Arc Hero, right? Yeah, and that's the one. Yeah, you play the game, uh, and while you are playing that level, you gain some skills. Even if you die and you need to play the uh, that part again, you use those skills. You can use those skills. And Harish was asking, so our learners, they play this section and they gain some skills but when we ask them to repeat that level we don't let them use new skills and i said wow that's that's, that's amazing this that's a really good idea but how can i make them use the new skills uh, while they play the same level again uh still i couldn't find the answer uh I hope Harish has found it, and uh, Harish, if you have a way to make it work, please share it with me. And also for the feedback, uh, we can have some uh, bonus items. Maybe keep a visible tip while redoing it. Yeah, Osuna. Okay, so that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Yeah. I thought about how can I make the mechanics in the storyline. <laughs> a bonus one. Uh, I think this is a really fun one. Uh, maybe your learners, they are faster than the others and they answer the questions very quickly and they know the stuff. And for them, there could be some hidden items and some mini games. And while uh, there, they can reach some extra uh, information, some extra uh, experience. Uh, if they do the, I don't know, the the, 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 the the tasks very quickly, it could be a nice way uh, to give uh, different kind of show the progress and the feedback. Okay, so as summarized as part, we define our goals and we define our team. Uh, and we know uh, our learners, their needs, and some other stuff about them. We have our personas, and we have the content, and we turn the content into a gamified experience. We have uh, our elements, feedback elements, uh, or uh, the elements to show the progress. We, we are ready, but then the test process starts, and we need to test our uh, gamified experiences or games again and again, again and again, and with different uh, learners, and also uh, different times, actually. Uh, it, is, it is really effective. So when you ask people to play games uh, in the evening or in the morning, their reactions and their feedback uh, would vary. And it is, it's really interesting for me. It was really interesting. And of course, we can say that, yeah, I created this experience and people uh, have played and they enjoyed it a lot. But here's the question, did they learn? Did you reach your uh, targets? And maybe you have reached one of your targets fully, but what about the other ones? So we need to evaluate our uh, ex learning experience uh, in a very good way. It will give us also some ideas for our further uh, interactions. Okay, for this part, for the presentation part, uh, that's all. And do you have any questions? Then uh, I will move on with some examples. And I hope in that part we can be more, uh, it can be like a chat. And I'd like to hear your ideas. I will share some examples. Some of them are finished projects. Some of them are. Uh, I have a I have a folder in my, on my computer, and it says that unfinished projects. And some of them are from there. And I'd like to hear your ideas. And let's let's brainstorm uh, about the the game and gamification. 
So before that part, do you have any questions? Okay, several users are typing. You don't like speaking. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do. I love speaking. Yeah, we have a question. Yes, I'm curious to know what kind of software you use to build games. I saw the reference game was done in Activate. Yes, correct. That's correct. And would it be possible to share the original file to see the backend? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. For this group, uh, I can share the file with Damna. And yeah, sure. Yes, yeah. Osama has a question. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Nadine. I mostly use Articulate Storyline. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not that patient or uh, I don't have enough energy to learn Unity or uh, some other tools. And the, uh, the, the problem is, I know a little, very little about coding, and it seems really hard for me to learn all those, uh, you know, the steps, and it's a lot to me. It's a lot to me, and because of this, I usually create prototype on uh, Storyline, or actually, for a few times, I use Twine, and it's an amazing tool uh, if you really like the uh, next adventure games. Let me share the link of Twine. Uh, for some prototyping, uh, I use Twine too, but mostly Storyline. Then I had a chance to work with some game developers in a few projects, and I created prototype on Storyline, and I could tell them what I am looking for, then they moved on the project to uh, Unity. By the way, I think Osama has, has a question. Yes, so yes, can yes, you yes, speak, yes. Uh, could you speak if you can? Yeah, sure. Hi, Razvan, how's it going? It's fine. It's, it's good to see you here. <laughs> uh, so, um, as you know, like you, I was mm -hmm. an AFL teacher uh -huh. as well. And I'm trying to pivot to instructional design. And I guess you kind of answered part of my question because I I was a stage of decision paralysis. Some people mm -hmm. be like, you should learn Unreal Engine, Unity, Python, and whatever. So what do you think is the best first step at least? To be a game developer or? No, no, instructional designer. So like what Me is the back and technical uh, skills that I need to start with, you think? Okay, so here's the thing, actually, also in, in our field, you know, there are a lot of titles like instruction designer, e-learning developer, learning experience designer. Uh, I don't know, guys, you can move on. Uh, you can add some more titles to the list. Mm -hmm. uh, but in my opinion, to be an instruction designer, uh, you don't need to know uh, Unreal Engine, or unity and because okay first of all for me okay let's say that i i need to learn if i said that i need to learn those tools and i have a little experience about with them so it took years and for this sector there are a few projects uh which created with uh, unity or unreal engine yes i know that now the vr is uh getting more important and people want to uh, make some vr games uh, vr game fight experiences in our company we also uh, work on uh, unity there are some game developers and they create uh, interactions with unity but as an instructional designer actually okay so with simple terms as an instruction designer, if you know how to use Word and PowerPoint, it would be enough. So, because being an instruction designer doesn't mean that you're going to be a developer. Uh, 
But if you want to be an e-learning developer, then uh, there are some, you know, very popular tools like Storyline, Captivate. Uh, I don't know, there are hundreds of, but these are the uh, most popular ones and Articulate Rise. So to use them, uh, you, again, you don't need really deep technical knowledge and you can learn them very quickly, very easily. But if you want to create some really complex mechanics, uh, like the like the one which I showed you that can you beat me that uh, rock paper scissors game, but actually in in a few course we use those kind of uh, complex mechanics. Uh, as an e-learning developer, if you have uh, experience and knowledge and an eye for the visual design, and if you know something about the uh, instructional design, how people learn and what adults need to do to you know the, to, to learn uh, these are the basic skills but it's not about okay of course if you know after effects photoshop illustrator uh, these are really good points but again uh, i have seen some amazing experience amazing courses made with uh, powerpoint in my opinion, okay, so uh, other people can also, uh, other friends can also share their ideas. In my opinion, the content and the deciding how the content is, will be presented is more important than those technical knowledge, uh, that technical knowledge. But, okay, so uh, this was the long answer, short answer. In my opinion, storyline will be enough, Osama. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I did see some of the things that you made in the past, like with the one uh -huh. with the grammar, if you remember, at uh -huh. I think you yeah, were the yeah, one who did it. And I really, really liked it at that time. It's a pity that it's down now. Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Right, thank you so much. Uh, for example, Harish shared uh, another tool, Genially. Uh, although I'm not a fan of it, <laughs> since the restriction of uh, downloading options. Uh, I'm not fan of that part. It offers a lot of templates and uh, a lot of guides and courses. Uh, it it's it has also really a powerful uh, community. And also, as a uh, I'm not I don't know uh, if you're still teaching English, but for a teacher, it's an amazing tool and uh, it's a very good. Uh, place to start. Right. Great. Thank you so much. Yes. By the way, we have yeah. another question. Sure. Sure. Julio just uh, wrote a question. Could you answer this one too? Sure. Okay, Julio. What have been some of the main problems or challenges you have had to solve in your projects? Technical ones or people ones? <laughs> Yeah, for the technical one, if I when I encounter with a, a technical problem, uh, I go to other people, and uh, mostly my technical problems would be related to you know, storyline or LMS stuff. Or sometimes I uh, take the courage and I use some JavaScripts in my uh, e-learning experiences, and then somehow they don't work. I don't know, and and then I go to my friend and say, "Okay, I use this one, but it doesn't work. And I, would you mind helping me?" The okay, so I feel lucky because now I work in a company for uh, for one year. For the technical problems, there are a lot of people I can go and talk, and they're you know JavaScript uh, developers, game developers, unit developers, and I feel lucky about it. But when I have some instructional design problems or when I need some ideas uh, about that part, uh, it is a bit hard to find support. And I read a lot. I read a lot, Julio. And, and there are some amazing books. And actually, they help me a lot and they're still helping me. And also, there are some communities like your community and uh, Tim Slate has an amazing community or articulate community. And I ask people there, 
And there are some lovely friends like Harish. And when you need help, they're open to uh, help. Uh, the, the really amazing thing about this uh, community is almost everybody is open to help. And, you know, I don't have a, what was it, for, um, formal training uh, about for the storyline, for instructional design. And I have read a lot. I have had some online courses and I learn uh, from other people a lot. Thanks. My pleasure. Okay, let's, let's see some uh, examples. Uh, again, this was a prototype. And in this prototype, we, uh, Maybe you have heard that extended disk. Uh, it's it is a test, and it is used to understand people's characteristic, and it is mostly used to uh, while hiring people. So in this one, uh, each character's name is related to that disk, and uh, here we created some characters and they have their own characteristic thing. And we start with a simple matching activity. Uh, in this course, in this prototype actually, we try to make people do something and some something physical and match the characteristic, these actions with those people. And after that, uh, we introduce their characteristics and communication style and how to identify them then we said that these are actually our superheroes so your task is to convert this person to uh, become a superhero you will help them to become a superhero by uh, answering some questions and obtaining some objects and step by step you will you know, uh, earn the belt, the, all the costume, and the, I don't know, the clock and gloves. And finally, uh, and finally, it will be a hero. But then, okay, so for you have some now, you have some four heroes. So what are you going to do with them? And you said that, so these heroes can't fight uh, alone we need to find some uh, alliance alliance for them and there are some people you will listen to their sentences and you will decide which characteristic uh, they have okay so i can't have, i can have a little i think this is dominance yeah okay so it appears here uh i really like this one unfortunately uh, it's that as a prototype, we couldn't sell the uh, idea to other side. Um, but I'd like to show this one. Okay, it is in Turkish and it is created for um, for the new ones, the for an insurance company. And there are some people, they will start the work and they don't know anything about <clears throat> these products. And uh, there are four different games for different insurance packages uh, for this one i said that since they will start to work uh, new uh, i said okay this is a simulation area and by the way the product is uh furniture insurance i don't know if the, the translation is correct but the furniture insurance we said that okay now welcome to our company so this is our uh, prototype and you will go there and you will find some items, uh, some dangers, uh, which can uh, use the idea uh, while selling this insurance to your uh, to our customers. And he says that okay, so I'm gonna be your guide. But here, uh, you can pick a character, and at the end of each department, each um, part you gain an object and also you see the progress from here so when you complete the, each section uh, it highlights the section uh, the room sorry it was a fun project 
and I will enjoy it while working on it. And now I would like to show you one more. I see that we have a few uh, minutes. Uh, one more unfinished project. And sometimes I, I'm showing it because, okay, so I don't need to finish it, but I really like the idea. Uh, and I said, I'd like to try, I'd like to give it a try to see the mechanics and how uh, they work. And it's just a quiz template, but it could be used in a course, maybe by, by changing the, the character, the concept. Uh, in here, you don't choose a character, but you choose uh, a guide. And these are the, the famous people who climbed up the Everest. And different mechanics, total points, team members, time bonus. And when you go there, as I said before, it is uh, just the, the quiz template. OK, it says that, by the way, I found something which seems like a piece of map. Let's keep it. It may be useful for our search. Actually, there is a story, and someone is missing. Someone is uh, important. Uh, someone important is missing, and you gathered some people to go on a search, and you have a, a guide, and you're looking for someone, and depending or that was just an idea. Depending on your performance, uh, the team member bonus. If you make a mistake, you're gonna lose one of the team members, and I don't know if that person uh, will have some accidents or maybe they don't want to move on. Uh, okay, my question is, when you look at the design and these may be the, sec the screen, uh, does it remind you any games you played? No. For me, no. No. Okay, so it was one of my uh, favorite games because it was just, you know, soothing, really relaxing, the uh, effects, the, the graphics. I used to play this game a lot on my mobile phone. Uh, actually, I get the design ideas from here, some mechanics from here. So while creating your game fight experiences, you don't have to find the, something which is not invented. You can use some mechanics and some uh, items and some designs, which is already there. So it would be uh, less stressful for you by the help of it. Just get some ideas from there. And also you can get the, not that, of course, don't copy the, the background of Alto's adventure, but you can make the same style, the color, and uh, I don't know, the music, the, the, the theme. And, okay, a few more quizzes, then I'm going to finish it. It was, there are just quizzes for a course, but that course was just about that... Um, a transport company, mostly uh, working in an airport. So all these games, all these quiz games were uh, related to airport or traveling. So in this one, it is just a template, by the way. Uh, when you find the correct answer, you get the photo and you put it in your uh, photo album. Or another one here. Okay, the story was, it is not here, but it was in the course. Uh, while you are running to get your ticket, someone bumped into you and your uh, luggage opened and you uh, dropped all the things and be quick and find the correct answer and put it in your uh, luggage bag. And... Huh. Now you're on the plane. You're flying, and the, the correct answers and long answers are coming. Just go there and find it. And OK, so of course, now you can hear, but there are some uh, sound effects and a little music here. And the last one. OK, so 
actually this is before the airport now you're going to the airport and there are some uh, you know tourist attractions and you go there and find the correct answer and take the photo and put it in your uh, memory box I don't know it was something like this And this one, we used it to uh, for the onboarding and people, uh, our people part. And you find the payers and you learn something about uh, that person. Okay, so I can stop here. Mm, yes, actually, we don't have a time. Yes, 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 yes. If you don't stop me, I can go on and on <laughs> and on. <laughs> Probably. By the way, if you have any questions, I think you can ask Ridwan after this session. And I am sure that he will be answering all of them, right? Sure, of course, of course. Yeah. I'd love to uh, talk about it more. Thank you so much for everyone joining. And I have uh, one last question, which is, uh, how would you describe today with one word? Uh, Julio. I don't like beyond a lot, but uh, okay. So in my projects, uh, we I use with different developers too. Uh, not in these ones, uh, but uh, the ones which I create for the the company I work for, we use beyond and beyond, and also we create some videos with uh, After Effects. Yes, we insert uh, them in our projects. So thank you so much everyone for joining today thank you so much Rutvan, for uh, hosting this session it was very inspiring i personally My learned pleasure. a lot <laughs> My pleasure. and i i if you want to host uh, this idea power hours just let me know and i will help you to host for this one I, I i'd love to see one session from harish yeah sure, sure. To... <laughs> please <laughs> Can I reach out to you after that? <laughs> um, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure which topic though, but yeah, we will discuss about that. Cool. So okay. Okay. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I strongly suggest uh, people who are interested in gamification to follow Harish on LinkedIn and check his uh, post about <laughs> uh, about it. Because uh, here's the thing: uh, you can find a lot of uh ideas a lot of things about gamification but you can't find enough uh written content uh, who plays games and then make connection uh with the the ideas uh, from the game to e-learning or learning and development part and because of this i think uh i hope harish writes more and i read more about all those games and it is it is really uh, valuable for me. Thank you so much, Renu. Yeah, sure. I will definitely reach out to you. By the way, just I meant to let you know. So thank you so much for today, and see you again next month. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.